Hey, so we begin in the midst of a zombie invasion, planting some trees to keep the um, ground and air pollution from our industrial zone away from our residents. And when you get to watch the cops shooting at the zombies, I love how a zombie will wander into a little... Uh, a little trailer park home, and then the resident will jump out with a pistol and start shooting at the zombie. Like, everyone in my whole city has a pistol. <laughs> and then they'll get overwhelmed by the zombies, and it'll turn into three zombies instead of one. And <laughs> yeah, The zombies were pretty fun to watch for, for a little while. In the past, um, it seems like higher density uh, cities aren't as susceptible to zombie invasions. In the past, zombie invasions have just been a matter of, like, it says zombies, but you don't see them anywhere, and then it says the sun killed them, and none of the buildings get abandoned or anything. But this lower well city did really did well for zombies. So uh, the goal for this city is to be a relatively low density, but I'm, I'm obviously going to zone the whole map. And have about 100,000 people and then use those people to man tons and tons of casinos and uh, events and, and tourism stuff. And then pull in tourists. So tourists can come to your city four ways, right? Through the highway, which means they'll come by car. They don't use municipal buses, so they all show up by car. So you either have to catch them there in a ton of parking rides, which can be not only expensive but not very um, efficient, right? Because they can only jump into the parking rides as quickly as they can enter the city via car so you can only get um you know parking rides will increase the maximum number of re uh, people you can soak up through the highway but there's still a maximum number that you can get through the highway um the next is train right train is the best way to attract tourists to your city um because you can put a train track to anywhere. You can put a train track right next to your uh, event hall or right next to your stadium, and they'll just get off the train and immediately hop in. And uh, you'll see that getting wealth from from events and uh, stadiums is almost 100% based on your traffic. Uh, because everything in this game is based on your traffic, because traffic is what makes SimCity fun. Um, so basically, if you make a pro stadium and you call a game and it's not near anything and no one can get there by any means except for by car then you're going to lose a hundred thousand bucks every time you call for a game um it's it's just not profitable whatsoever so you need to be delivering people a hundred at a time instead of one at a time cars deliver them one at a time so a hundred at a time would be like municipal buses but in order to get people onto municipal buses you have to load them up via parking rides but if you again if you try to do that at the entrance you can't get too many people in so train stations uh people get off the train station without a car and they walk to the nearest uh attraction right so if you put a train station right next to an event hall you're going to get the event hall completely maxed out on on people just from the train station and it's it's totally awesome and very effective the next two ways to get tourists into your city are airports and boats um and while boats actually have the potential to to import more people than any other any other means of transportation uh you can only put them by water so that's not obviously not going to be very relevant to this scenario and uh, not only that i i tend to have a lot of trouble actually getting anyone in via boats i don't know why it seems like uh, it does well for commuting from one city to another in order to work uh, at jobs, but it doesn't do very well at bringing in tourists. And that could just be my experience. I've only tried it like three or four times, and, and I haven't, you know, really obsessed over it or anything. Trains work so well, that why bother with boats? But anyway, the final one is airport, uh, and you just don't do airport, man. Airport is the only way to get high-wealth tourists, so if you're going for the high-wealth achievements, then you have to do an airport, and, and airports, are you know, they work well for that. But if you're just in it for, like, I want to make a gambling city, it's my first try, and I want it to succeed... Uh, then you really don't want an airport. The, the reason being that people, the wait time on airports is ridiculous, the passenger capacity is very small, and people who come from airports will always drive. So it's just like adding a second highway entrance that costs tons of money and has a much lower maximum capacity for people. So if you're just going to add new tourists to your city who are going to drive around, you might as well add them via the highway anyway. Um, so that's how you get people into your city. Uh, so basically the point of all that is that we just want a train station and we want not only one train station, but we want a bunch of train stations all around our city in a big U shape. So right now I'm trying to get my income up so that I can use that money to fund the expansion of my train network and I'm going to put, uh, train stations all around my city and it will be good times. 
So in a lower density city, like a gambling city, which this is, uh, germs and sickness and crime become a bigger deal, right? Because a, a high density like um, building will have 400 workers and 200 shoppers and 150 students, right? So if it has two or three sick people and two or three criminals, then that doesn't really cut too deeply into into its... Uh, productivity and it'll still probably be able to pull, bring home enough money from from real working citizens to be able to to sustain itself and not get abandoned and whatever. But if you have a lower density building, like the 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 most low density of low low wealth buildings, there is only two people in there. So if one of them is a criminal and the other one is sick, then it's just going to get abandoned. Um, so the lower your density, the more important it is not to get too sick and not to have too many criminals. Uh, and that's why you see me repeatedly opening up the, the germs menu and looking at where my germs are coming from and planting so many trees and just filling like the, the whole area between my industrial and, and my residential is just filled with trees. And it's not a big deal to waste space on that kind of stuff <coughs> because again, this is going to be a low population, low density city. All right. Zoning to max density, right? There are some there are some tricks for zoning, uh, and I'm not going to go too in depth into all of them. But the one you see me repeatedly using here is that the Maxis Manor in the police menu is exactly the size of a high density building. So you just hold it up to the corner and then put your road uh, where it would need to be in order to leave room for the Maxis Manor. Once you're completely crazy rich and you have several million bucks, you can actually just plop the Maxis Manor, build your roads, and then delete the Maxis Manor, and then redo that over and over and over. Uh, another poor man's trick, if you want to do the same sort of thing, except for uh, with less money, is you can use those those parks, the medium wealth nature walkway parks. They're, they're about the size of a... Um, of a fully density up building and even though we're not planning to go to max density in this game we are planning to go medium density and medium density buildings are the same size as max density buildings so in the very beginning I zoned the whole uh, place with dirt roads willy-nilly just to get some traffic flow I mean not traffic flow mu some some cash flow and then I rezoned everything the way I want it so the way I want it uh, you have to Extend your highway entrance a little bit uh, so that you can you can store up a better backlog after the choke point of the highway entrance. And then go for a T intersection at the end of the highway. You always need that T intersection there. Um, and then uh, off of the T intersection, you only want intersections with avenues. You don't want a bunch of streets joining that main road, right? So you, you split the highway traffic in half, and then you split that traffic into four four more, right? So you end up with basically four little avenues coming off the highway. And then along those four avenues, you want to uh, zone all of your residential in little L-shaped or U-shaped or H-shaped um, side streets. Basically, the reason we use L, U, and H-shaped side streets is that you don't want to create any new shortest paths between the residential area and the industrial or gambling area uh, with your side streets because then that'll that'll cause unnecessary traffic. So you can see I did an a, uh, an a, a L above this one, and now I'm doing a U down here, and I did an H, uh, or I'm going to do an H next over to the right of that. Um, uh, so we don't want any mass transit in with our residential area because we want all of our mass transit available to be shuttling tourists between the train stations, the highway, and the expo centers and the stadium, right? So any any bus stops you put down in this in the residential area is just wasted wasted time for the buses. They're going to go down there and transport your own citizens, and you don't have that many citizens, so it's just really a waste of time for them for the buses to be down there whatsoever. The exception is train stations. Uh, train stations are like the most efficient form of public transportation internally and externally, so it's totally fine to just put a couple of train stations all around your city, and people will use the train stations to get. Uh, from your own residential area to your own industrial area, so they're they're really cool in that way. You never want uh, train tracks to intersect with roads that actually have cars on them because that'll cause massive amounts of traffic. So just run your trains in a U around around the whole universe. So um, here comes that H I was talking about, um, and that's how you zone. That's how you manage your traffic, man. Taxes. Uh, you're gonna want to zone big areas 
with your tax rate set high, uh, 12%, 13%. 13% is the highest, I think, that you can go for low-wealth people. And because our entire population is all low-wealth, I basically keep the tax rate at 13% all the time. And industrial and commercial tax rate at 13% as well. Um, so you're going to zone these places and get some, some people to move in at low density. People will move in regardless of what your tax rate is, but they won't up their density until they have enough combined um, wealth and happiness to up their density, right? So basically, um, the way that works is every day people go to work, they bring home money, then they take that money and they go shopping, and they turn the money into happiness, right? And then, once a day, they have to pay taxes. Uh, and the taxes come out of their wealth, but if they have no wealth left, then the taxes come out of their happiness. Or maybe it's the other way around. Maybe it comes out of happiness and then wealth. Either way, the combination of wealth and happiness gets taxed. Uh, and so if you want your guys to up in density, they need to earn enough money to pay their taxes and have some left over. And people will up density with a 13% tax rate, but the lower the tax rate is, the, the quicker they'll, they'll up their density. So zone at 13% tax rate, and then once everybody's moved in and low density and there's no more moving trucks on the road, then just drop your tax rate to 0% for residential, and they'll, they'll up their density, and then you just bring it back up to 13%. So while I'm still zoning everything, most of my money is coming from my 13% industrial tax rate. And industry will give you tons of money as long as you have workers to work there and as long as you have a freight depot for them to drop freight off at. In order to upgrade um, the, the tech of your industry, you need community colleges or universities. Um, but if you're fine with having z uh, level zero industry or if you have other jobs for people to work at like if they're working at a casino then they don't need any higher than an elementary school education so basically you want to educate exactly enough workers so that the educated workers take up all of your factory jobs and allow you to upgrade the tech of your factory but you don't need anyone else to have a college education because it's pointless to work at a casino with a college education um, so the way education works uh, grade schools will educate people enough so that they cost less to maintain, basically. And they don't become criminals as often, they don't get sick as often, they don't use as much power, they don't use as much water. Uh, and the big advantage of grade schools, they're very cheap per student and they use buses, so they don't add to traffic almost at all. High schools are the next rung up. They give actually a little bit more of the, the bonuses, but not enough for you to really care about. Again, the main point here is that they do not give you uh, higher tech workers and they do not add traffic to your city. Also, they're very space efficient. They take a lot less space to get thousands of students into high school than it does to, to do the same thing with elementary schools, but because of those other advantages, they are a little bit more expensive per student. The next rung up, community colleges. This is what you want to use to upgrade the tech level of your industry. Everyone should go to community colleges. It's awesome. Uh, it takes a lot more space, it costs a lot more money, and most importantly, it creates a ton of traffic because college students drive to school instead of taking buses. Uh, and the final rung is the university. You only really need the university in order to unlock various techs, and it's, it's really fun to play with, uh, but it's not particularly useful. Community college does everything the university does except better. Um, the university takes the most amount of space, most amount of money per student, causes the most amount of traffic, and... Uh, it gives you cute little tech unlocks, so that's neat. It, I think it also gives you uh, a slightly higher benefit than community college as far as industry tech, but you can get level 3 tech industry without universities, so you don't need it at all in that in that way. Once you've specialized your city, once you have your gambling houses, your tourism, or your you know, el el electronics or whatever, you're not going to need the industrial factories anymore, and therefore you're also not going to need your schools anymore. So you can go for a bunch of community colleges in order to get the money to build your city, and then once your city is up, blow up the community colleges, blow up all of your factories, and then go and get all your money from somewhere else. Oh, yeah. Uh, finally, because high schools take up so much less space per student than elementary schools but cost so much more and only give a slight benefit, um, you really want high schools in a high population city like the, the 400k or 1 million people sit type of cities because it just saves a lot of space. Whereas with cities like this where you're going for low density, high po or low, density low population and high, high monies and you don't really need the educated community college people to work in your factories, Totally go for elementary schools. Just throw down tons and tons of them. They all ride buses, saves on traffic, all sorts of good things. Traffic is really important to making money, so you know, always think about traffic in ahead of uh, space.
Education pays for itself in two ways. First, by recycling. Recycling, you uh, sell alloy at the Trade Depot. And second, it reduces crime. So if you don't have schools, you need to have three or four times as many police departments. So you're saving money on cops and spending it on teachers. Ta-da! When you're starting out with uh, gambling centers, don't put any add-ons on them. Just put one naked gambling center at the entrance of your city. Avoid the um, the cultural moneymaker things. Uh, any of them that provide shopping and sell souvenirs to your patrons are basically just taking taking money away from your incoming tourists that could have been spent on gambling. So go for the ones that don't sell souvenirs and just charge tickets to, to show up, like the Empire State Building and the um, Arc de Triomphe. You may have noticed uh, several times when I wanted to increase building density, um, I reduced my residential tax rate to zero. But even when my residential tax rate was zero, my income was still 15k an hour just from taxing my industry. So that's why it's important before you start adding any of your gambling stuff to just build up a huge industry base uh, to, to fund basically the, the moving in of your citizens. And our final topic is actually uh, the tourism, which is what we're setting up this entire city to do. Uh, the goal of this city was just to quickly set up a city that has a $1.2 million per day uh, income from tourism. I actually continued the city a long time after the video was over and uh, got up even higher and made a stadium and put down the Arc de Triomphe and um, the Statue of Liberty and all that stuff. And that's fun too. And it, it can really just, you can just continue it on forever. But here's the feedback loop, basically. You, you plop down an expo center, and that pulls tourists into your city. It, it's important to add the sign for the expo center so that it pulls in exactly as many tourists as it wants. Anybody who can get to the stadium gives you money. Anybody who, because of traffic, fails to get to the stadium costs you money. Uh, so just by plopping an expo center, you're just going to make a bunch of money with no other consideration. You don't have to do anything else. Uh, now, you've got a bunch of tourists that just went to the Expo Center and watched a motorcycle race or something weird. And they're in your city, and they're at the Expo Center, and they want to go shopping. If there's nowhere good to, to stay at a hotel and there's nowhere good to shop, they're just going to leave, and you're going to be wasting all that money. If you put a gambling center right next to your Expo Center, when they're done watching the game, they're going to go to the gambling center and take a nap and then spend all their money. Uh, after, after Expo or after stadium things, they always go to sleep, so you need hotels. Uh, commercial zones will turn into hotels if you zone a bunch of commercial next to your expo center, but that is not giving you money. What's better is uh, to actually build your own hotels out of the gambling center. So you pop a gambling center, you add some cheap rooms, you add a uh, nickel slots, and you add the the sign and the the, uh, um, the the what's it called the comedy place to pull in more tourists. And then uh, everybody who goes to the Expo Center goes to your gambling house and stays there. Remember Shortest Route. Uh, they're going to go, when they enter your city, they're going to go to the, the closest uh, commercial place. So if your gambling center is at the entrance to your city, it's going to catch a bunch of tourists. Remember that term, tourist trap. You want to trap your tourists in a place that gives you money rather than giving your commercial zones money, which doesn't help you at all. Um, so put two gambling centers uh, at the entrance of your city, put a gambling center at the entrance of every train station, and then surround your expo center with gambling centers. They will all become profitable, and it's totally fine. So each expo center is going to pull in uh, 300,000 tourists or something like that, and you want to catch them all in hotels and, and gambling and get them to give you money. And then you can pop unlimited number of expo centers, and you'll get unlimited number of tourists and the only limit to how many tourists you can get and therefore how much gambling they will do and how many hotels they will stay in is traffic so you know it's it's just like any of the other challenges in the game it really comes down to hey how cleverly can we can we manage the traffic of our city to to really maximize our profits and get more and more people in um so it's a it's a fun challenge i had a lot of fun making the city and i stopped at 1.2 mil per day and uh that's what you should do man that's what you should do.